This is the Yushin Haze 7M, a top-of-the-line flagship 7x7 from about four years ago. That means in the year 2022, it's in this awkward position where the turning isn't bad, but it's also not great. And I think that's a shame. So in this video, since I don't think we're going to be making it turn any better, I figured why not run in the exact opposite direction and try and make it turn as terrible as possible. That way, at least it has something going for it. So on this journey to the world's worst 7x7, you better bet we're going to be dumping in every cube lubricant known to man, as well as possibly a few things that aren't exactly cube lubricants. It's going to be a good time. But it turns out there's plenty of more interesting ways to make a cube terrible without a drop of lube involved. So we're going to be saving this chaos till the end of the video. And in the meantime, we're going to get started by messing around with this cube's magnets. If you don't know, one of the most hilarious mods that you can do to a magnetic cube is to just flip around half the magnets so that they always repel each other instead of attracting. That way, instead of getting that nice snap at the end of each turn, the layers will just refuse to align at all. Now, part of the reason I chose the Haze 7M is it was one of the first magnetic 7x7s before cube manufacturers figured out how to glue those magnets in super efficiently, so it's actually pretty easy to pry the magnets out and then glue them back in backwards. Now, I think my strategy is going to be to leave all the corners alone, flip around all the magnets in these types of edges, leave these edges alone, and then also flip around all the magnets in these inner edges. That way, every single pair of magnets on the cube will be reversed. So let's go ahead and take it apart and see how feasible that is. So these types of pieces I'll be leaving as is, and then on these types of pieces, I'll be flipping around all the magnets. So there should be two inside of each piece. Yep, there we go. And so let's just take a knife and see how easy these are to pry out. Okay, so I got all six magnets out of those pieces. It wasn't too difficult. So now let's break out the super glue, glue them all back in the wrong direction, and then see how they interact with the pieces that they're supposed to attract to. Okay, so here is the first section of reverse magnets. As you can see, these pieces definitely want to stick together. Let's see what happens if we just let go of them. Yeah, it basically just self-destructs. So anyway, all you have to do now is repeat that on the remaining section of the cube. So let's start the time lapse. After an unusually difficult assembly process, because the pieces were not being very cooperative, the reverse magnet 7x7 is assembled, and as you can see, the alignment is impeccable. But before we see just how annoying it is to turn, there is one more thing that I switched up about this cube while I had it taken apart. Can you spot it? It's the kind of thing that you either don't notice at all, or it will annoy you to no end. And that is, the color scheme is wrong. That's right, it looks perfectly fine on first glance, but in reality, it's the mirror image of where the colors are supposed to be, which should annoy all cubers to no end. It's actually super easy to do this, you just swap around two pieces of each corner. Anyway, on to the turning. Luckily, this cube does have some pretty good corner cutting to begin with, so hopefully this alignment won't be too big of an issue. Yeah, there we go, it just cuts right through it, but then it starts being misaligned on a different layer, just like that. So let's try doing an algorithm to see just how terrible it really is. And yeah, that is pretty bad. It's kind of just locking up, like catching on every single turn. That is actually pretty remarkable considering all we've done so far is swap around those magnets. One thing that I did notice though is that I've always had the tensions kind of tight on this cube and I think by loosening those up we can actually give the pieces more room to spread out and feel even more terrible. But while we're loosening those, I think we should also take the opportunity to mess around with the springs. I've noticed on big cubes that the springs tend to be relatively strong because the cube is pretty heavy so you want it to push back quite a bit and so I figure why not replace them with the weakest springs possible. I found these springs here that are for like a lightweight 3x3 and they should make this cube feel super floppy. Okay, so the cube has been threatening to explode as I unscrew it, which is pretty funny, but take a look at this spring. The proportions are super weird, like it's super skinny, but as I expected, it is super strong. So replacing it with this little weak spring should be perfect. The only problem is it might not actually fit inside the hole. So let's check it out, and yeah, no, that does not fit in there at all. So I guess if we have no other springs that'll fit, our only other option is to ditch the spring entirely and just put the screw in there alone. I think that should help things turn suitably terrible, so let's go around the cube, loosen things up, and remove all of the springs. Okay, I think that little bit of looseness was exactly what we needed because this thing is already looking so much more terrible. Let's try and turn it. Yeah, the pieces are so spread out now that even the corner cutting can't save it. 
it is just absolutely awful. Okay, now there is one more little thing I wanna do before just throwing random lubes at it. And that is, I wanna make this cube not only feel annoying, but also sound annoying. You might already be able to hear that little bit of a rattle. That's because I've already started down this path by adding a few little washers inside of the pieces, but I wanna make that rattle 10 times worse. So let's just open up the cube and throw a ball bearing inside or you know, maybe eight of them. There isn't a whole lot of room down there, but I think these ones will at least fit and hopefully it should make it very, very annoying. Okay, on second look, there was actually a lot less room down there than I thought there was. So hopefully the cube should still turn and it seems like it does. Is it annoying? Oh yeah, that's a lot worse than it was before. You know what? I was just about to say that unfortunately we can't have extra ball bearings rattling around in the edge pieces because they would just stick to the magnets, but then I realized that we don't have to use ball bearings. We can just use little bits of plastic to rattle around and be extra super annoying. Luckily I have lots of little bits of extra plastic, so let's try it. So now with bits of plastic in every single edge piece, we now have insanely loud rattling for maximum annoyance. Anyway, without further ado, I think it's finally time we get on to the lubrication. We're gonna start out with DNM37. It's gonna make this cube nice and fast because uh, speed is definitely this cube's problem. So let's just drop in a drop or two or three or four or five or six, and let's break that in and see how it turns. Uh, a little bit hard to break it in when you can't really turn the puzzle to begin with, but yeah, it's definitely a little bit faster now, a little bit less friction. That means the pieces can slide past each other a little bit easier and be a little bit more annoying, so that's good. So how about Lubical Silk? I still got my original bottle. This should make the cube nice and smooth. Let's add a few drops in there. And this is gonna take too long if I do them all separately, so let's also add a bit of Cubical Weight 2, as well as some Weight 4. That'll also make the cube nice and smooth. Just put a whole bunch in there. Okay, let's break it in. I'm expecting this to make the cube feel a little bit more sluggish, but also nice and smooth, and it feels like that is indeed what is happening. Okay, lightning round. Let's do some Lubical Speedy. Couple drops in there. Uh, how about Lubical 1? Let's add some of that. Okay, Compound X from Engstrom. There we go. How about Mystic? Let's add some of that. Doesn't really like to come out of the bottle, but there we go. And then Celeritas, uh, part A. Just stick that right on there, as well as some of part B. And let's try and get this all to go inside of the cube. Oh, it's kind of leaking out. Uh, 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 there we go. Okay, that whole mix of lubes has sort of a weird sweet smell to it. I wonder where that's coming from. I guess it could be the plant-based mystic. It's also getting all over the outside of the puzzle. My hands are starting to feel a little bit sticky, but the puzzle itself, it actually feels kind of nice. It's kind of this smooth gliding feeling to the turning, kind of frictionless. I actually kind of like it. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of both Engstrom Gravitas and Dignitas. I can never remember which one is which. These are supposed to be carefully added to specific parts of the pieces, but of course, I'm just gonna stick it in there and see what happens. So let's break that in. That actually did make the cube a little bit slower and more controllable while still being nice and smooth. I like it. Now, another interesting pair of lubes is Max Command and Max Fleet. Let's add some of that right down the middle there. This is basically just silicone. This is some weird non-Newtonian stuff. So let's stick that in there. Oh, and for good measure, because we forgot to lube the core earlier, let's add in a little bit of lubical black right into the pieces. That can't hurt, right? I mean, it can make a mess and stain everything, but oh well, let's break that in and see how it turns. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely turns. Admittedly, the turning has been going downhill pretty quickly, but that's fine because I believe this is a lubricant that can fix everything. And that is WD-40. So let's go ahead and stick this straw in here and, oh, that's a nice noise. So let's go over to the other side of the cube and add a little bit more over here. Oh, I missed the cube a little bit, that's fine. Let's go over here. There we go, getting all over the outside. And this stuff definitely does smell. It's also getting all over everything. So let's wipe that off real quick. It's hard to describe, but it suddenly smells like I'm holding some sort of mechanical device that should have gears and stuff. The turning has definitely gone downhill. It's like all the cube lube is just gone and replaced with just nice and smooth, but also just terrible feeling. Like just the quality of the plastic is gone and it feels like it's replaced with something other than plastic. Also, it is all over my hands. Anyway, I think the only solution to this is to sanitize it with some hand sanitizer. Let's throw some of that in. Okay, that didn't actually make it into the cube very well, so let's go around to the other side and try that again. Uh, hand sanitizer, there we go. Ooh, that also has a distinct smell to it. Uh, it's also kind of bringing out the smell of the WD-40 back. That's a little bit weird, and ooh, it's on a cut in my hand, that hurts. There's no escape from it being all over the outside of the puzzle now. It almost makes the cube feel a little bit faster, but kind of in a watery way. Uh, it still has that weird sort of not quite plastic feeling to it from the WD-40. It's weird, the cube almost feels more tight again. Like there's so much stuff jammed inside that there's physically less room for the pieces to move around. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but it is what I'm feeling. And as I'm working it in more, it definitely is getting a lot slower 
slower, a lot more friction, just so much more unpleasant to turn. So I think that means it's time for the grand finale, the best cube lubricant of all time, and that is Vaseline. So let's open this up here and just stick a whole glob of this inside of the puzzle. It's kind of hard to get it into the puzzle physically, so I guess we have to work it around all different sides. Yeah, let's do this, this, and this. Work that in. There we go. And you know what? Just for good measure, let's go around to the other side of the cube too and get a whole nother glob. Stick that on there and there and there. Just get it all over the place. Work that in. And yeah, just get that all nice and broken in. Okay, I've kind of given up on keeping my hands dry at this point, which means that this cube is now very slippery. Let's try and do like one more algorithm to finish off the video. How about a J-perm? Uh, 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 okay, I give up. That's too hard. The magnets are reversed. The color scheme is wrong. It sounds like a maraca. There's no spring, so it's just sort of floppy. It was super loose. Now it feels kind of tight. It has about a dozen cube lubes in it and a bunch of things that aren't cube lubes, and now it is super slippery to the point where I can hardly hold it. I'm going to finish things off by doing a quick solve, or rather a slow one. Keep in mind that my normal 7x7 average is around 5 minutes, so I hope you all enjoyed, and let's see how this goes.